I'm thinking Any about idea? I'm thinking about hitting the live button. I'm not sure if I want to hit the live button. You should probably we, hit the live button soon. We have people waiting. Why are we hitting? Who, who do we have waiting exactly? Melissa. That's like one person. But she's which, my biggest fan. Which Melissa? You have a lot of Melissas in your life. So <laughs> which Melissa? Are we talking about McCarthy? one, two, three? McCarthy, Etheridge. Which one? No. Bond. It's she's McCarthy. Awesome. Yeah, she's yeah McCarthy, sure. It's McCarthy. So we were talking about bacon and uh, bacon. baking bacon, baked bacon, uh, and then Lou was talking about something else, something called fried bacon, which is weird because that's not bacon. But uh, you were talking about that, Lou. I just did you did you learn that in Mother Russia how to cook your bacon, or did you, I mean, and and when you moved over to America, land of the free. Why did you hold on to that that commie practice of frying your "quote unquote" bacon? What well, was it exactly? Be, being that I am a Russian, right. which makes me which makes me hate the Germans and the Nazis who put their bacon in the oven. Uh, I really wow. have no other choice. Wow! So what you're telling America, America, is that uh, your choice in bacon is uh, Soviet Russia. Or Nazi Germany, bake. I mean, everybody's going to start boiling their bacon. No, 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 is that no, what you want to do? Is that what is, you're leading them to? There is a third choice. Oh, is I've there? Cooked. I there is. Cooked. There's always only one there choice. Is. Or two choices. There's always only two choices. It's no, a pick no. It's there, always a there, pick em. There is a third choice. It's round as Canadian as kind of pink. Oh gosh, that's not a choice. <laughs> that's suicide. That's what's your name? Are, all Canadians are drunkards and, and ham eaters. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. And Andrew Johnson. I don't want to oh, mention Andrew we're live. Johnson. We're live. We're yeah, live oh, yeah, we're live. Oh, I don't. You send, I, like, I, when were you going to tell us? I, send me the link. I said we're I'm going sending, live. I'm sending the link. I said we were. No, you said I don't know if I want to go live right now. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I did. While I was live, I said that. <laughs> so, so I don't want to mention Andrew Johnson's name by name. But some Canadians definitely have some issues uh, that uh, probably should be considered uh, in the near future for possible bacon therapy or a, a bacon intervention. Andrew Johnson, I believe he was the first person that I saw that boldly posted the uh, "quote unquote" Canadian bacon uh, photo, which ah. it was it was it was slightly triggering, but I managed to survive. But. Everybody can see that we have Lufine on the show. Everyone and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But we had to <laughs> we had to settle through some bacon issues. And now that we've settled through <laughs> the bacon issues, I'm going to play something. So you guys have to be quiet because you're not going to hear it. You're not going to hear this. I'm sorry. I haven't developed the technology. I know it exists, but I'm a noob. And uh, this is the best that noobs can offer. So we're going to play a commercial for why we are here. Well, let me get it lined up. Let me cover Lou's face. There we go. And... The Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition is proud to present the 5th Annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. It will be held at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, just outside of Kalamazoo, starting Thursday, June 22nd, and going through Monday, June 26th. That's right, Liberty Fest is getting longer and stronger. There will be presentations, discussions, bacon duels, and outdoor activities in an environment that is both family and grown-up friendly. There will be special appearances by Jeffrey Tucker, Dana Martin, and a few of the Freedom Fiends. If you have only talked about what a free society would look like, this is your chance to live it and see it with your own eyes. Now round up your friends and family and get them registered today at mplfest.org. And there's a discount for paying with Bitcoin. That's mplfest.org. Dogs welcome. Longer leashes recommended. All righty, we made it through that commercial, Lou. I just want to wow. say, there's things I like about this year's commercial better than last year's. But the bacon uh, breaking tribute. news, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob uh, Gordon oh, with oh, oh, Newsfire.tv oh, with this breaking news. <laughs> I got a little. You guys have probably heard Paul Gordon in the background. Well, the the Lou and Andrew didn't, but uh, a video started. So it started here. breaking news. Well, luckily it was one of my videos, but still. But, uh, wow! Yeah, you don't want one of our videos. No, I. No, it was one of my videos. It was one of our one. late night sessions. That was one of my videos, so it was a good one. <laughs> ah! 
So uh, your last uh, commercial, last year's commercial, had a, a fine homage to bacon, and you did not mention the bacon in this year's commercial. So actually, I did. Issue? I didn't hear it. Yeah, when I talked about the different activities that would be going on, I said bacon duels. I missed that. How did I miss when you said bacon duels? I didn't hear that. Probably because you're not listening. Could you tell the studio audience a little bit more about the bacon duels? Well, it's it's really quite simple. The uh, The bacon duel would be, uh, how could I put it best? Uh, there's two different types of people. Well, there's three different types of people in this world. There are those who bake their bacon, like Nazi prison guards. And then there's people that fry their bacon. Like, like commie bastard people. scum. Right. Like, no, like normal people. Like commie bastard scum. I have to keep uh, correct. No. You. Anyway. Well. But anyway, those, those of us who properly uh, do the bacon by frying it. The bakers. By deep frying it. By the deep bakers. frying it. By deep frying it in its own juices. Instead of being a nasty person who puts the bacon in a in a dark oven all by itself, uh, the bacon is not by itself. It's it's got all its friends with it. There's a whole bunch of bacon buddies. As a matter it's of fact, all one. All the bacon know, buddies are all together. Go ahead. It's, it's probably all one pig. And then there and then there's the third group. Are and they? Those are the Cana Those are the Canadians that eat ham. Right, the Canadians that eat ham. Right, they yeah, haven't thick, thick slices of meat. Thick slices of pigginess. I, I'm not saying that Canadian, whatever you want to call it, isn't good. It's, ham. it's good. It's ham. It's ham. It's good, but it's not bacon. It's it's like, and I mean the on the, on the food group, it's I mean bacon is for me bacon is number two, and and ham is probably like. I don't know, three hundred and twelve somewhere. Bacon there. doesn't become bacon doesn't become number two until after you've eaten a lot of it. It it, it is number two on the list. It and takes then it, it and takes then some it, time. And if you don't drain the grease, sometimes it turns into number three. That's, <laughs> that's, that is factually accurate. So there's going to be a bacon <laughs> duel, and we're going to determine a blind taste test. Is that what yes. we're going to do? I'm. I'm. What, what day are oh, you doing this? Because I want to make only sure that if, I'm only there. if the two of us take our glasses off, will it be a blind taste test? <laughs> Actually, so we're gonna well, have blindfolds, and then we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna have blindfolds and put stranger strange strange meats in our mouths. That's... Yeah, and, and, the, and the safe word's gonna be sausage. This reminds me of college. <laughs> that's not a that's not a safe word, sir. <laughs> sausage. Whoa! <laughs> oh, you said sausage, so the, the oh, safe no. word is deeper. <laughs> <laughs> does that remind you of college, Bodie? You're, you're really yeah, yes, I bet it actually. does. I bet it does. Uh, I, bet it does. I don't. Yeah, Lou, you're was, really not good at safe words. Really that was <laughs> that was one time. That was one time. That was one time. You, didn't, you, you have no idea how you got sucked into that one, right? Right. Oh, oh. oh. I don't think Bodie got that. Bodie's too slow. So I, I was I hoping know. he would while he was drinking. Yeah. Oh, what are you drinking tonight, by the way, Bodie? Coffee. Oh, well, that's kind of a buzzkill. I'm drinking water I, and uh, a fruity beverage. Well, I can, a I can throw beverage. scotch in it. Fruity beverage. Fruity beverage. Well, fruity yeah, beverage. you're making me want to go grab my bottles of Jim Beam. You're just going to – a Jim Bean? Not Beam, but Bean? Beam. Did you – like, Bean. 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 I've never had Bean. Jim Bean. Bean. Where the, the baked – you know the, the fried baconers you... have Jim Bean. Uh, the fry, the the bacon, the 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 the, the baking baconers. See, I, I think like, the I, I think I, the I propeller bacon. on the front of your shirt is tied a little bit too tight. <laughs> it is a propeller. Speaking it's, of propellers, uh, I understand that Jeffrey Tucker is a confirmed guest for the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, which, oh, by is. the way, we're supposed to be talking about. Yeah, he is a confirmed yeah. guest. Well, we were. We're talking yeah. about the bacon uh, uh, duel. So when is the? What day is the bacon duel? Uh, I don't know. It's it might, it might just be a, a series of multiple sneak attacks. It might be kind of like the poke wars. It just happens when it happens. Right. You wake up one morning and and you've been poked and and you got meat in you. Right. <laughs> I've never played. Wrong with that. I've never played that version of the poke. Remind Do me. We not sign to, waivers. Definitely don't want to include Lou in the poke wars. <laughs> definitely. So I'm I'm getting there Friday. Uh, we're getting there Friday, so the so, so morning. I because I, I was expecting you Thursday. Why Thursday? What, wait, here, here's a here's I a thought, relevant I you, question. I you said that you were going to be getting in there late Thursday evening. No, that's what I thought. Well, um, 
let me know wh wh which is better to come for full days for 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 days Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What are the days where the most action happens? Uh, probably Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you can only do three days, those would be the days. Yeah. Well, I got. I got. Wait. What do I, I got three nights. Okay. I rented a cabin. Uh, the junior cabin was mm -hmm. four. So I got three nights because four nights is expensive. It's expensive. So that would be Friday night. Wait, no, Saturday night. No, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's good because uh, on Monday morning, that's the last day of the festival. That's when everybody breaks down and, and, and heads home. Um, I do a breakfast for everybody that's still there. And it's kind of a stone soup type deal where people bring over their leftover eggs, potatoes, uh, bacon, sausage, kielbasa links, vegetables, and all sorts of stuff. And I make up a breakfast for those that are still there, which last year was probably about 35 or 40 people. How many people are you expecting this year? Honestly, I'm not really sure because I don't handle the uh, the uh, registration, things like that. I, I just do like promotions, so commercials and going on podcasts and stuff like that. Um, I think we're probably expecting around 200, maybe a little bit more, maybe a couple less. It's really hard to say. I can vouch for three people. You're going to have okay. Mr. Bodster. You're going to have myself. I am going to be there. So all of you people that have been dying to meet me in the flesh, probably to punch me in the face. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, now's yeah. your chance. Well, don't don't punch me in the face, even if you want to. But but it is your chance to meet me in the flesh. And uh, all of you I'm that want to meet Bodie also. You can, try, uh, you can try to punch me in the face. It's no, no I, I prefer no. I'm not real interested in meeting you in the flesh. I'd rather see you clothed. I it's not what you keep sending me in private telegram messages, but I guess I'm not, I'm not on talk telegram. About that. Yeah, I'm that's be... I know that's what we I didn't know that's right. No, ladies and gentlemen, Lou is not on telegram. No. I'm going to I'm going to no. be sleeping with him. You are. You're going to Yes, actually Bodie and I are going to be sleeping <laughs> together. So. And are you bringing your daughter with you too? I am. Yes. Yes. Okay, my cool. She... All right, she's she's really gonna enjoy it. How old is she again? She's, she's Nine or twelve. 10? She's twelve. Twelve. Okay. Yeah. And tell tell the studio audience a little bit about what what kids typically do here for all you folks that are listening and may have kids and thinking about taking the kids. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's pretty much two different groups of kids there. You have the free range kids, and then you have the feral kids. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> my da my daughter will probably go back and forth in those two camps. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the um, I, I'd say the feral kids are are more more the free range. It's not like they're running around tearing stuff up, chewing the tires off of your car while you're parked or anything like that. Uh -huh. But uh, as long as their parents just, are rich and I can sue them, uh, I could have a problem. Probably not. But, <laughs> I could have know. a problem. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I, as far as venue goes, there's a lot of activities there. Uh, there is a lake, and, and of course, with the lake, you got a beach. Last year, I did a, or I tried to do a little fly fishing seminar for beginners, and uh, fly fishing is just not one of those easy things to teach. But there is a little lake down there, so if, if the kids want to go fishing, uh, I'm sure there'll probably be supervision if necessary for them, so that, you know they can go on down the lake and, and do their thing. But uh, there, there's usually some some parents there that enjoy doing the the kid activities, so they'll put stuff together. And of course, um, I have my hippie friends Jason and Mary who always have like an art supply shop in the back of their van because that, they're hippies and that's what they do. Kids, this is that's the awesome. one time where going to the back of a stranger's van is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there's windows in that van and it says Google volunteerism, not free candy. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Close yeah. enough. Yeah, my, my daughter will – she's going to be one of the free rangers, although she said to me, she says, I can hang out with you if I want, right? Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever you want, you know, if you want to hang out and watch us do our shows or whatever. Yeah, she probably she probably won't want to. Uh, there, there's, oh, I'm sure there's she won't. Generally, Just don't, there's don't generally... take Pez from strangers. Why not? <laughs> it might not be Pez. Well, not after dark. <laughs> but <laughs> after dark, the real Pez comes out. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I, there's usually a, there's usually a pretty good size group of kids there. 
I, and... Yeah, my my daughter, she's kind of a she's shy and for about thirty seconds. So okay. she's a little reticent and I'm sure once she gets there and she's she's gonna meet that one kid that's like, Okay, I connect to this kid and then I'll never see her and that's fine. I don't care. Okay. I mean yeah. I do care. I, I want, yeah, oh gosh, that sounds horrible. I mean wow. I don't care if she runs around and has fun, not I never wanna see that kid mm-hmm. again. No, but no. but something else going back to the lake, they the the uh, campground Circle Pines does have some canoes that uh, that are available for use. There's no charge for those. Uh, you can swim down at the beach. There's a little raft just outside of the rope area, and you can go out to the raft and catch some sun and see some spiders crawling around on the raft, and then throw people off the raft into the water. And are there so. any lake sharks? I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> you, want, you want me to be honest? <laughs> no, actually, I don't think there's a. I don't think there's a northern pike in there. It's just, yeah, just, just stay away from the deep water kids. Just stay. No. I just want to go. I just want to go fishing. Yeah, you want to go fishing? Oh, that's interesting. I'll go fishing. I'm not, I'll bring I'm, all my I, stuff. I don't care about the fishing because I don't know how you're going to get all the fishing gear in there, son. But but good luck. Wait, well, what we'll figure it out. Gear? We'll figure it out. You need a pole and a small tackle box. Okay, but I don't have a pole. Do you have two poles? Bring another pole for me, man. I'll bring another pole. I have I have like three. You know what? Because then, then when you go fishing, your then, lines get screwed up, and it's good to have just another pole. And that's great. I, th- I think I have four poles in the back of my truck in the window right now. So so either way, just if I, if just I, in, I, just in case I need one or three. So so yeah. so you never know. So I uh, what it's I want when I want out of this is at the end to say that I slept with Bodie and I borrowed his pole. That's. <laughs> then my day is set. So and you and you can go fishing too. So tell us a little yeah. bit about. Uh, okay, so tell us a little bit about uh, some of the events that the adults have to look forward to at the uh, Midwest Peace and Liberty. Did I say it right? Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Yeah, I keep, yeah. I keep calling it My Little Pony Fest. Well, that's better. I would go to that. I would totally hit that fest. Actually, Vermin Supreme is not expected to arrive at all this year. Oh, oh that's disappointing. That I've always so. wanted to meet him. Yeah, me too. I have met him. Did Did he check your teeth? No, he didn't. Wow, no, he you didn't. got away with one there. <laughs> wow, because <laughs> he's very that strict is... with the teeth. I hear. Well, I didn't want to give him a donation, so. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> that's why. So, so, so who are you? we have we have Jeffrey Tucker who is scheduled to be there. Do you know what days he's going to be there? Uh, I think he's supposed to be there the whole weekend. I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I think maybe Saturday and Sunday. I, I can't honestly, I can't honestly say, but I, I think he's going to be doing a, a little speaking engagement there. And uh, Jeffrey's always really great to listen to. Um, he he's very inspirational. I, when when he starts talking about the future and the things that can be, uh, it it just makes you want to go out and buy electric gadgets. And there's like some some people that are radio hosts that when when they start talking, you just want to go out and buy survival food and water filters because the end is near. Yeah, or so. or some people that do what? Uh, well, I guess he's not really. I was throwing my Alex Jones there, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I hear his new movie is going to be called Police State, Police State Five or Six. It's not as bad as I said it would be. <laughs> You know, it's not, you know, it's not really as you know, gosh, it's not really as bad as you know. They've got these nice Trump wigs on now, so that makes it a lot easier to deal with. So, uh, we got Jeffrey Tucker. Who else we got there? Dana Martin. And I, who is I, I Dana had... Martin? I don't know who Dana Martin is. Well, I'm I'm sad to say that I don't know enough about her because from what what I have heard, she's uh, pretty darn interesting. I, I think she's done a couple presentations, or at least one at Anarchapoco. And um, she's a uh, peaceful parenting, radical homeschooling, home birthing type person. So, I'm, uh, like I'm, I said, I don't I don't know a lot about her personally, but I've heard nothing but good stuff about her. And and the people that do know about her are very excited that she's coming. Are you aware, Lou, that you sit in a TV on a rusty pole? That's what I heard. That's what I saw in the picture. It's good. It looks pretty just good. So, just so you know. know. Lou Fien is the man. There he is. He's he's the man on the TV on top of a rusty pole. I thought that would be. I don't even know why. It's one of those things. It's just like you look at it. It's like, this makes sense. Why? So, so it's, it's, like I'm in my, it's like I'm in my tower talking to the two peasants. 
Yes. You, yes, exactly. We're just we're just so so honored to have the Rusty Pole King among us. It's it's an awesome thing. So actually, Dana Martin. Well, that would be interesting for me. I am. Um, I'm certainly trying my hand at peaceful parenting. Uh, probably not doing it by the numbers. I'm not sure. I, really I think you're doing do it I, by the numbers. I think you're doing it better than most. I, I don't know you that don't... there really are numbers for it. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. using that term loosely, but uh, I'm well, sure you, you don't not... you don't you don't indoctrinate your kid either I, way. Yeah, I don't. I well, I, I, I well, you can't help but indoctrinate your kid. Uh, I right, I try to degree, I try to not... limit the indoctrination as as much as possible. I try to encourage her to stand on her own knowledge and her own understanding, and not on what dad. I don't want her to inherit dad's positions in life. Well, I do. No, that would be bad. I, I actually do. I just don't <laughs> want her to. No, no. Okay, let me word it this way. I, I I don't want her to inherit her dad's positions, but I'll be pleased as punch if she finds them on her own. I think I think you mean dispositions. Whatever. Yeah. I don't. Okay. How do I mean dispositions? Just, just describe that word. Disposition. Uh, just you know, being a goofball, stuff like that. Oh, that's not me. I'm a very serious individual here, Lou. Look at the bow tie. I'm sure you think you are. Yeah. I'm, look at that propeller I'm, on the front of your shirt. I'm actually a very serious individual. I take everything that I do very seriously, and uh, I, I know that. Is that a clip on? I know for it. No, I know that for instance, there are a number of you that are uh, 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 shit posters, uh, and I enjoy it. I don't participate in it though, because it's not me. So, other the, I, so I do just a little bit. It's no, I'm I totally do. I are you kidding me? I love it. I totally do it. I, what what I, people don't know is Lou, I'm actually dead serious all the time. Lou, you've seen my feed. You know. Uh, yes, yes. And, and yes, actually, uh, a lot of my what people would call shit posting is actually I'm experimenting. I want to see what people think, and I have learned a lot, even about developing my own thoughts through those alleged shit posts. But back back to the fest. Let me ask you, how did this thing start in the first place? Oh gosh, this is probably my favorite part of the story, and this this came about before I joined the group or became aware of it uh, in early. Gosh, maybe 2013, so like January or February, there were a handful of people that were just sitting around and they're like, you know what? A whole bunch of us should go camping this summer. And it, it, it's like a handful of people. It's probably fewer than 10. And this was when the Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition was in its very earliest stages. Uh, I mean, it was just baby steps, just a couple people, uh, maybe just a, a maybe a one or two meetups, maybe if that. I mean, it, it, it was really very early on in the evolution, and uh, it eventually became a public event, and that's how I found out about the Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition, was because somebody had, uh, somebody, it was it was uh, a very low traffic page, like uh, mid-Michigan voluntarists or something like that, and, and I was still pretty new to, uh, to voluntarism myself, and I was just really looking for other people in real life, not just on the internet. And um, I, I saw this event, so I clicked OK, you know, that I was going. And I posted on there, I'm like, oh, my God, this sounds great. I can't wait for August. And this is like, uh, I don't know, maybe March, something like that, early March. <laughs> and uh, I immediately got a couple friend requests from from a couple of people that were that were founders of the Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition. And I wound up going to a couple meetups. And by the time that the fest came around, I was pretty much good friends with all of the core group in southeastern Michigan in the Detroit area and uh, even a few people from from elsewhere and the very first one was held in Brighton Michigan so southeastern Michigan um, probably about 45 minutes to an hour away from Detroit northwest of Detroit so directly north of Ann Arbor which is where University of Michigan is uh, the People's Republic of Ann Arbor <laughs> and it was in a, it was it was a state forest uh, park or, or it's a state park and they did have a campground over there, but we we're in like the group camping area. So uh, no defined campsites or anything like that. People had a tendency to, to go over to their little areas. You had Agora mountain up on top and then you had uh, the hillbillies playing their banjos at night over in the one area. And then there were a Ooh. bunch of us over in another area. And I, I, it was just really great. 
And I, I finally got a chance to meet a couple of new people. Well, actually, there were quite a few new people that um, I hadn't met that were part of the group or loosely affiliated, or that was their first time meeting anybody, and they wound up becoming regular members and coming out to many events afterwards, you know, just the different meetups and then future Liberty Fest. There was one guy, Arnie, who was uh, uh, very active in the Libertarian Party, and I don't hold that against him. I still like the guy. <laughs> but uh, I, I have he, friends uh, like that, too. Yeah, but uh, he he introduced himself as the constitutional anarchist. And wow. uh, I it, 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 yeah, yeah. Wow, were you and, triggered? Did you like did your eye twitch? Did you like nose started to, to drain pus? Would no, no, nice. I just I just laughed at him. But uh <laughs> Did he break into the Library of Congress and sign the thing? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Talk don't about know, but, talk about trigger. Anyway. Yeah. But anyway, why well, back at that time I probably wouldn't have been uh, too fired up about it. But anyhow, um, he had never met anybody there, and he had been scrolling around on Facebook like the night before, or two nights before, or something like that. And it wasn't very long before that he'd been scrolling around on Facebook, and he comes across a, a post with the with this uh, copblock.org door hanger signs that says "Come back with a warrant." And he's like, "Wow, that's really cool. How do we, you know, how do I get one of those or a handful of those?" And uh, I think it was Katie uh, Testa who who had posted it and and she had a bunch of them. She says, well, come out to the festival this weekend. And he's like, what festival? So he comes out and he doesn't know anybody. He broke his tent out of storage. He'd been there for a while and it was a little bit beat up. Not too bad, though. But he comes out there by himself and. You know, he he comes in, checks in at the at the front gate. Well, what we call the front gate, it was basically a table, but you know, <laughs> letting people know that you're there. It was a table and an easy up. But anyway, um, he he comes in and he goes to set up his tent, and a bunch of people come over to offer to help him and everything. And we got a chance to meet him, and and uh, by the end of the weekend, he was part of the family and and felt very comfortable, and and he started showing up at future events. Like I said, he'd come out to the meetups every now and again. And he lives over on the western part of the state. He lives over in the Kalamazoo area where the current fe where the fest is currently held. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just one example. There was a I – mean, there were a number of people that came out that had never been – to any of these groups before. Uh, it was some people that kind of came into volunteerism through the Ron Paul campaign and, and campaign for a tiny bit more liberty, you know, groups like that. And eventually they, they wised up and they said, you know what, this probably isn't, uh, it's probably just a circle jerk. So rather than mentally masturbate, we're just gonna, we're gonna get off the, get off the patch and go cold Turkey on the statism. Cause like, you know, the, the, the men status groups like the LP and campaign for, a tiny bit more liberty. I mean, that's just that's just the 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 men's statism patch. It's for people who can't go cold turkey. Yeah, I skipped that patch. I went right yeah. from hardcore conservative Republican to I mean that I know, oh, I know. I know. I, I, I'm so happy about that. Was, but uh, I, I, I knew I, you were I, there for the switch that so you saw. It. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but I mean, there were there were a number of people that that was their first time meeting anybody outside of on Facebook, and mm -hmm. I I knew I knew a fair number of people, but there were new people that I met, of course, because the the people that had never been there before, um, and it was nice because on that very first one we had two people from New Hampshire, Brian Sovereign and Stephanie Murphy came out. Uh, there was one person from I don't, I don't think it's upstate New York, but it's definitely New York State. Uh, Rochester area, that area. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's uh, upstate New York. Yep, I know that yeah. area. And uh, I don't know how far. Uh, I think the furthest south that we had was Kentucky. I'm not sure how far west, but that was the first one. There was just a handful of people there, and, and of course, people came out for for uh, day visitation. So uh, I got a chance to meet with some of my friends that I always see once in a rare while. But uh, the second one was uh, was the first one that we had in in uh, Delton, Michigan at Circle Pines. Oh, that you one, went right to that, huh? Yeah. Uh, that one was, was really nice because uh, Will Coley came up from, I think he's down in Tennessee. Everybody's and, uh, favorite anarcho-Muslim. Seriously. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love me some <laughs> the, Will. The redneck Muslim. Yeah, yeah he's, he's awesome. He's great. <laughs> I, I mean, if, if we had If we had a McCarthy trial, but for Muslims, we would be like, Mr. Coley, 
are you now or have you ever been a redneck? <laughs> redneck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but but he's a great guy because and he shows oh, up great. and 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 he, and he just starts cooking. Is I mean, like he and I have that in common. Right? We're just always cooking. Um, so I mean, it was real nice to meet him and 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 he got a, a good number of donations for his charities on there because what he does is he goes to these different events and provides food and 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 outreach and talks about uh, Islam and libert libertarianism and anarchism and everything else and um, basically the proceeds from each festival go to cover the cost of food at the next festival <laughs> and, 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 and of course. You know other other expenses too, but I mean he he does a pretty good job of getting out there and talking to people and, and just promoting liberty in general. He did a presentation, and this was a few years ago, so I can't really remember what it was about. Uh, I think it was like the history of liberty. So he did a but, similar but, presentation but sure. recently at uh I didn't see it. I saw the video. It wasn't at Pork Fest, but I think he did a presentation at Pork Fest, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it was fact, about I, the history I, of liberty too. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's one of his typical presentations. But anyway, so that was really nice. And, and one of the other things that I remember from that one, I'm pretty sure it was that one. It was either that one or the next one. There was a guy that was listening to the Freedom Fiends on Saturday afternoon. It was a live show. And uh, <laughs> Saturday, he, oh, Freedom Fiends was on Saturday afternoons. I, I wasn't yeah. in that world at that time. Yeah, yeah. Back then, we used to do live shows on the weekends. So, and, and we did the live show from the fest on uh, Sunday. So, yeah, that was the second one because I had Will on there and a handful of other people. But uh, this guy was listening to Michael and Bill Bupert do a show on Saturday afternoon, and he got on his motorcycle and rode from somewhere in Illinois, somewhere Chicago area, maybe north of Chicago, got on his motorcycle and rode out to the fest while listening to Michael and Bill Buper talk about the about the festival. And so he got out there that night and I got a chance to I got a chance to talk to him that night and, and I don't know if I got him on the show on Sunday, but uh I yeah, that was really cool. I people are talking about the stuff, they get on their motorcycle and they ride out to check it out. That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, Bodie and I, we, we, we don't have the reach of Freedom Fiends, but we will be at least attempting to do more than, well, as much as possible. We, we definitely will be attempting to do live shows from the Midwest, the, uh, the Midwest. Peace and Liberty. Peace conference. and Liberty Fest. Peace, peace and Liberty Fest. Peace and Liberty Fest. It's not a conference, you freaking commie. Whatever. You freaking hidden commie with your conferences. I don't know where you're going with that, but yeah, we're, we're, we're going and you know, when we set up, I'm sure Lou, you can stop by and say hi to us as we attempt to do our, uh, our, our live shows. So sure. And any, anything that I can do to be, a, be of assistance. So, so g the, the people that are listening who have never been there and actually I'm one of them. So I'm anxious to hear this. Give, give people a sense of what do you go through when you get there, you sign in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do you do you park your car in a parking lot and then walk? Do you? How how does that work? How do you get your gear in gear? Okay, well it's real simple. You can uh, when you pull onto the property, there will be signs that point you up to where the check in uh, booth is, and it's going to be an easy up and some tables, and there will be a picture of a giraffe, and it says "Show us your papers." And uh, yeah, I mean, if if you get there uh, during the daytime hours or during normal hours when there's somebody manning the booth, there will be somebody to direct you. Uh, there's basically two areas for the for the people that are camping to go to. You have the meadow, which is where the main bonfire pit is. Well, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the only bonfire pit for there. But um, that's usually the, the partiers and then the, then the people with the RVs and campers that are hooked into the electric and water. Uh, so... People will camp over there. And then you have the orchard area, which is an apple orchard. So there's going to be – I don't know if there will be apples on the ground just yet this time of year because it is still kind of early. But uh, people will go set up over there, and that tends to be the families and the early risers. So the they, they go to bed at reasonable times, and they get up early, whereas the people in the meadow, they go to bed when the sun goes down and, and wake up around about the crack of noon, something like that. So – 
so so some people stay in in the uh the cabins some people do the tents yeah and where where are the cabins at okay the cabins are kind of close to the pavilion uh and the pavilion is where they're going to be doing the presentation so um i think that you guys are going to try and get set up to do uh do your live broadcast from the pavilions, at least one or two of them. I don't yeah, know how we, many we, exactly. Yeah, we hope to try to at least at least one, at least one from the pavilion. We also mm -hmm. plan on doing live remotes and other weird things. But yeah, uh, I mean, you can, yeah. I, one of the one of the guys that works there, and he's he's part of our group now. He he really enjoyed us coming out there the that first time. Has been active ever since, or at least partially active. Uh, he said that you guys would probably be able to set up in the rec hall. Uh, there won't be any Wi-Fi in there, but well, um, I, I have there... a, I'll have the, I will have the Verizon hotspot. Okay, yeah, that's, awesome. th that, that's a very important uh, thing to mention. If you have Verizon or AT and T, you're going to be pretty good there. Uh, if you have T-Mobile and the which, other which, stuff, you're probably going to be, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, my first year out there, I had T-Mobile, but where I live now in Bear Sketch, one. Really, the only the only options that you have are Verizon and AT and T. So, like uh, T Mobile, I, I could barely get any service up here, and it's it's not supported up here. Yeah, I, I, I've 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 done a lot of work in Tioga County, PA, and there's no very little T Mobile coverage out in a lot of the rural areas. So, how did you end up in Delton? Why why Circle Pines? Well, my hippie friends, Jason and Mary, we, we're really interested in going on to private property since the first year we kind of wound up. Well, we didn't kind of wind up on, on state land, but we didn't want to be on state land. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, partic particularly yeah. after the busybodies came over and, and were complaining, you guys are being loud. They can hear you on the other side of the lake, which good. to me, I don't think so. But, but anyway, even if they could, good. So the busybodies were coming around making noise and, and being bothersome, and we were just like, you know what, let's take this to private land. Uh, we should be able to find something, and it'll work out just fine. And the hippies, Jason and Mary, had been out to Circle Pines for, uh, I think, some music festivals or something like that, and they live in the area, so they're quite familiar with it. So they had recommended it, and uh, a bunch of us went out there to scope out the location, and yeah, we we pretty much fell in love with it right off the bat. We went out there in the springtime, so it was before the weather even broke. Really, uh, well, I knew the snow was melted, but it was still pretty early in the in the year, so and you didn't have leaves on the trees yet. But we went out there and we saw the rec hall, the pavilion, uh, the different camping areas, walked through the meadow, and. Uh, then went down to the lake, and you know, like I said, the lake is really nice because they got this little beach down there. Uh, there's a fire pit down at the down at the beach, as well as uh, uh, the, the the canoes and such. But there's also a uh, sauna down there. Ooh, yeah, sauna. Yeah. So so when people get there, they have stuff they can buy, right? How how, how many vendors are going to be at this? And, and I know you're vending, right? So you, you, you're going to be uh, uh, offering foods for some, some, some sales, right? Yeah, I'll be doing like a, a mid-morning breakfast because I'm not one of the early risers. Uh, well, I, I wake up kind of early. I just It just takes me a while to pull my act together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll probably be doing like 9 or 10 o'clock breakfast, something like that. That's early for uh, a lot of people. That's early yeah. for a lot of people. Not for me. Yeah. It's late, actually, but. Well, well, it also depends on how much prep work I do the day before and how much I got to do that day. But I'll, I'll I'll be serving omelets again. I did that last year on Saturday and Sunday, and it went over pretty well. I'll be looking so, forward to the assault kitchen. I am. Yes, it's not it's not the it's primary awesome. reason why I'm going, but it's got to be. A good reason. It's in the top five the salt kitchen experience. Must experience the salt kitchen so I can wisely uh, relate stories of Lou's assault kitchen yeah. in a knowing way and yeah. get all the, kinds the, of street cred for it. So, you know, the, the assault kitchen is reason number two. Meeting me is number one, probably. <laughs> That's but funny. anyway, that is yeah. that is a, a gross exaggeration of reality, but that is awesome. Dream, <laughs> uh, dream big. So, dream big. Uh, th there is a vendors group, and I don't know if people have really gotten together yet and, and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I know that there will be 
uh, Gretchen will be doing t-shirts there. She's making up t-shirts for the event. Ooh. Yeah, and, and probably a couple others. I had suggested another design that I think uh, that I think she'll probably go with, uh, or at least I hope she will. It, it, it was uh, quite successful at Park Fest. It was the uh, it's a black t-shirt that says "Love" with the voluntary V on it. You you probably you probably I've seen, seen the, that one. The logo. Yeah, yeah. And that was probably one of the most popular ones at Park Fest. Hmm. That's that's cool. So yeah, uh, I should come up with something. I'm gonna co- I gotta come up with a bacon shirt. Oh yeah, you got to. It has to be mm-hmm. something about the bacon wars. But what would you recommend, Lou, for the folks like, especially for people like me, and hopefully there are more people like me and and Bodie also that are we're coming from a long distance. What would you recommend that we make sure that we take with us that we won't necessarily be able to have there? Oh, wow, that's deep metaphysical question. Right. Well, and it's, well, and it's, it's a very broad question. Uh, I mean, are you talking about food? Are you talking about supplies? What? I, yeah, no, well, yeah, food, yeah. supplies. The, the, uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming food is going to be available there, but like, okay, you better make sure you bring shampoo and. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah, of course, bring bring your uh, personal items, your toiletries. Now there are. There are actual showers. There's a couple sets of showers uh, for both men and women that uh, they have the hot hot running water and everything else and in the, in the toilets and stuff. So oh, wow. it's it, it, it's That's not luxury. The, the toilets yes, it, have hot and running water? Yeah. Awesome. Hot, hot, awesome. hot and cold running water That's in the toilets. Awesome. That makes sense. Totally. <laughs> yes. So yeah. anyway. But anyway. Yeah, I'm, there, there are indoor facilities, and there's enough showers around so that people will be able to get their showers. I mean, if you go at rush hour, you're probably going to have to wait a little bit. But uh, I'm when, heck, when's, I, I'm not, ru- when's rush hour? Uh, it all depends. Uh, it's, it's kind of spontaneous. Oh, okay. I don't think there's a set like time. so, we you witness spontaneous order like multiple times. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty. I know cool. a lot. There's a lot of spontaneous order there. Now, as far as as far as who all is going to be vending food, I can't honestly say. My primary goal is is to keep it to just breakfast. Now, I'll I'll probably maybe do some dinner stuff because I, I I can't just cook for like one or two people. It's like physically impossible for me. I'm like an old Italian grandmother that way. You remind me but a I, lot of an old Italian. That that's so fitting. When I think Lufine, I think. Old Italian grandmother every smack, time. I'll smack your knuckles with a wooden spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I'll yeah. smack so, yeah, that's that. Whatever. Yeah, so, so part uh, so part Catholic nun too. But anyway, <laughs> oh, I'm used to uh, that. That's yeah. That's, yeah, your body grew up in. I'll bring so. back memories. Yeah, but I imagine there's probably going to be some people that are going to be they're going to be uh, serving some dinners and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know who I was going to be doing the, the breakfast, but. I'm pretty sure there's going to be dinners and stuff like that. And something that I've noticed is uh, some folks will go and make up a bunch of food and then invite people over. Maybe they'll sell to like a small crowd, uh, which is probably what I'll do for dinner time. I'm not going to do like, you know, the the mess hall for, for dinner like yeah. I do for breakfast. You're going to just send out a, a secret list to a certain number of people that you're invited. If you want to pay for this meal, you're invited yeah. to eat well, my I, food. I, I have I have one friend that she and her family will probably get their meals from me the whole time or almost the whole time because of they they they'll probably be in a camp and in their in in cabin they won't want to cook at all they won't bring a barbecue grill or anything like that so they would just rather come see me and I whip up like one hell of a mean steak dinner. Oh, oh. I plan on I plan on well, go ahead, Bodie. Bringing a grill is a good idea. Bringing yeah, a grill yeah, is bring, a good idea. Bring a little grill. So if if you can't if you can't find somebody that's vending food and you want to make your own, or if you just want to make your own, you know, go ahead. I, I so a, a little grill would be nice. I duly noted. I uh, will also be bringing, and maybe folks will consider this just in case. Just in case I'm like lazy, I don't want to go out. I want to, well, obviously I want to go. I mean, I don't want to go find the vended food. Or I am probably going to bring me some Chef Boyardee some cans. Just in case, because I eat that right out of the camp, baby. Ain't no thing for me. I'm gonna stock up on that, Bodie. You with me? You with me? I'm with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that yeah. might be I'll something for just, folks. I'll probably to... just bring some ramen and eat it dry. Oh, that's nasty. Or you could just bring Bodie. Bodie does that. Uh, what do you call it? That soylent. 
Soylent. That's, that's gonna oh. be a pain in the ass, though. Oh gosh, Soylent. It's it's what is it? Powder and you mix it in Powder. water and then drink yep. it or. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, the the Chef Boyardee ramen and Soylent just sounds thoroughly disgusting. Well, it's it, it, it does, especially it when finish. you mix them all together. Oh, dude, punch it in. That, dude. That's probably as bad as thin sliced turkey bacon cooked in the microwave. That is not. That is, I can't with believe a, you with, even. With, with a side of tofu. The difference between Lou good. and I is I might write a horrible sentence like that, but I would never say a horrible sentence like that out loud because I have standards. Lou, on the other hand, <laughs> it just totally goes. For I, I have standards, but I'm willing to throw them out just to describe your Chef Boyardee and ramen. <laughs> Chef Boyardee is awesome, dude. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be like college again. It's going to be like college all over again, but as much as possible. Gay sex and Chef Boyardee. But, but yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Well, actually, it does. It really does. Bodie, trust me. It really does. So, I've yet to see it. Uh, what, name me. Oh, oh, let, let me ask. I'm asking all the questions here first. Let me give Bodie a chance. Bodie, do you have some questions for Lou? I don't want to totally. Not really. It's Are just a sure? camping trip. It's just well, a camping trip. Oh, yeah, there's questions, dude. All right, let, let me get back to uh, let me get back to the uh, necessities. So, um, if if you're in a tent, you know, make sure you have your tent, of course, and all your poles, because uh, actually there was a there was a couple that forgot to bring their tent poles. They had put their tent up to air it out or something like that, and when they put it away, they didn't put the poles back in it. Inappropriate. So I want, yeah, so I wound up loaning them my extra tent. Wow. So <laughs> I, I I actually got a pop up tent thingy that has no poles. You know the. And it has an enclosure thing. But I'm also, oh, yeah. I also got the cabin, but I had the cabin and the tent beside it, I guess. So, how that Yeah, I, I love those instant tents. I have one of them. I, yeah. I messed it up. I'm, I'm either going to repair it or get a new, the, new one, but I really enjoy it because I can have that thing up and running and, and be set up in 60 seconds. But um, probably a good idea to make sure that you have a, a good rain fly because there's a possibility that it could rain. It's camping. You know, right. I'd love to promise great weather for everybody, and and for the history of the fest so far, we've only had, I think, one real rainy day, and that was on Saturday last year, and it rained pretty darn good that day, but we've only had one day where it was actually really raining. We've had a couple sprinkles here and there, but nothing major. Uh, this is going to be the first time that we've had it in June, so uh, make sure you have a rain fly, probably be a good idea to bring some rain gear the temperatures will probably not be too bad it might get a little bit cool in the evening time so maybe uh maybe oh. a light blanket like a fleece the fleece maybe. sleeping bag is pretty good i like those yeah. maybe a light light jacket too maybe for nighttime uh maybe not maybe i mean it's always a good idea to have a have a light pullover or something like that when you're camping like i got my hoodie bear, yeah up here in bear Saskatchewan for fourth of july well actually I can't even – the number of times on the 4th of July where I was wearing a, a sweatshirt is just unbelievable at night. I, wow. It's, I, don't know if, I don't know what it is, but for some reason in July – or for some reason on the 4th of July, it's always cold. That is very strange. Well, we won't be there for the 4th of July, yeah. but but actually it's – so what, what are the dates? They're June 22nd. Yeah, it, it starts Thursday, June 22nd, and it goes through Monday, June 26th. So it'd probably be a good idea to bring some rain gear. Uh, make sure you bring a bathing suit, shorts, short sleeve shirts, stuff like that. Uh, maybe, maybe a pair or two of long pants. You know, it's how, how bad are the oh, bugs? It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, bug spray is always a good idea. The if you think the citronella candles work, or I've got one of those thermos things, which kind of works. I, I have uh, purchased. And I actually got some for you too, Bodie, because I'm decent. You are um, decent. It is a sunscreen and bug bug spray sunscreen combination. Can't remember. What yeah, it, but it's it'll probably fail as both. Wow, that is so. You know what? No soup for you. You know. That's fine. That's, That's fine. No soup but for you. I I, I brown should... nicely, so. Yeah, I set I up the tiki okay. torches over by my camper. Yeah, but yeah, the bug spray would probably be a good idea because it is camping. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely going with the bug spray. I didn't think of the Centronelle candles. That's a good idea. Those are awesome. I don't think that they work that well. There's there's people that swear by them, so I th I think individual results may vary. I've never actually 
totally rely, ever really relied on them, but uh, I've actually always just used bug spray myself. Not that I go I usually, camping a lot. I don't. I usually just wear pants and a hoodie. Yeah. They, but they, oh, you can do that too. But, but the bugs yeah. like me. The <laughs> bugs really, really, they light me up. And yeah. and I get make big sh- welts. Yeah. Make sure, everybody, make sure you bring a flashlight or a headlamp or something Ooh, like that. Oh, excellent. Yes. Uh, uh, you know what? That, that's not on my list. I, that's a good point. Yeah. I, that's like, always uh, That's always necessary. I like the headlamps myself. Headlamps is yeah, good. Yeah, it's a lot easier because then you can actually carry stuff. Yeah. So you wear the lamp on your head. That's what they mean, yeah. folks. That's yeah, the headlamp. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, it's a little uh, elastic band. Yeah, I, that, I, goes, that goes right in your head. Hook, hook me up with some headlampage. So you, when you, when you, you come to the fest, you got your car. It's all packed up. I'm assuming you can drive to your spot, unload, and then you have to drive your car and park it away. Is that or? You you don't have to. A lot of people do. Uh, yeah. I haven't done that in the past. Well, the the first time they were out there, there weren't a whole lot of people, so there was really no need to to pull out of the meadow and go over there. Uh, the next two years, I was in my tent, and I was over in no man's land, which was in between the the meadow and the orchard, and all uh, R- Randy England and and. Uh, Oh, so Randy, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on my yeah. Randy England. Yeah. So anyway, we were all my set Randy. up in No Man's Land, and uh, we had our vehicles over there. No Man's Land is getting kind of crowded these days. Uh-oh. There's a lot of people mm-hmm. setting up over there. But anyway, uh, with uh, – uh, I, I think a lot of people are, are – especially in the orchard are, are parking over in, like, the main parking area after they drop their gear off and set up. So, 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 so Bodie, I'm not watching the uh, the comments. Do we have any questions from our studio audience for Lou about mm. the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest? Nothing. We have no comments. We have absolutely no comments. That's amazing. We have we have like like two two hundred and fifty views so right, far. Right, and right, no yes. comments. Yeah, two hundred and sixty <laughs> views, and and it's usually we have like thirty views and like a hundred comments. I think Lou that they're intimidated by you. So if you're listening, so. uh, we welcome you to to ask Dr. Lou. Can I call you Dr. Lou? Is that acceptable? To, you could. Dr. Strange Lou. Dr. Strange, Strange Lou. Dr. Strange Lou. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Dude, I got to get that T-shirt. Uh, Dr. Strange Lou, you'll be waving on the, on the uh, nuclear. On the bomb. Yeah. That's, uh, so, uh, Yeehaw! So give me, uh, I think we've covered all, like, Remember the essentials. We're, nobody's. We're not going to remember all all the stuff. But you brought up a few really good things. But what is? I have to do the obligatory podcast question here, Lou. You probably know what it is, or as soon as I ask it, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that would make sense." Tell us, Lou. What is the weirdest thing that happened to you at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest? And by the way, Bodie, if you see a question, let us know, and we'll we'll, we'll address it. It is. It is. It is crickets. It's still crickets, crickets. You guys, so you just want to hear the dulcet tones of 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 the triad that is uh, Lou and Bodie and Paul. What are you gonna do? So anyway, Lou, strangest. What story. I'm what I'm hoping is that everybody is so mesmerized by, by the description that I've given that they don't have time to ask questions. All their questions have been answered. They're packing. They're making arrangements. That's good. They're, That's good. They're, they're suspending their mail service or having their mail forwarded somewhere else. Whatever it is that they have to do so that they could be at the 5th Annual Midwest Peace of Liberty Fest from June 22nd through June 26th. That's... At the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan. And go to mplfest.org to register yourself and your family members. Round them up. Yeah, do it, do it. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. This is the, I mean, I've met folks in real life. I've not met a lot, but I've met a couple folks uh, in real life, fellow anarchists in real life. But, uh, oh, what, what is that? What are you pointing at? We have a comment. We have a comment. Go ahead, Mister Commenter, or Missus, or Ma'am, or in, undefined. Lou covered it all. Lou covered it all. Who oh. said that? That was just that was concise. That was. That was Voltrog. Voltrog, Craig. Hey, I was gonna make. I was, I was actually gonna mention Craig. When, oh, way to reveal his identity. Oh, I'm sorry, Voltrog, Craig Trog, Craig Trog, okay, and Craig then Trog. and then Paul Paul F. Sin says radio voice. 
Okay, there you go. So, uh, um, I don't know what that means. I don't know either, but okay, great. We're moving I on. I like it. I like it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I was gonna. Uh, I was actually gonna say to Voltrog uh, when Lou mentioned earlier, discontinue your mail service. Uh, he he meant it M A I L, but also Voltrog M A L E as well. You want to discontinue? <laughs> yeah. You gotta oh. put in the right notifications before you leave. I hope Voltrog comes. That would be awesome. But, oh, that'd be fantastic! I could pick him up on the way. And yeah, drive you, down to you. Yeah, yeah, you could. You guys could sleep. Uh, what if, if? Yeah, one of you have to sleep on the floor because I only got one. You know, I got a tiny house. So. As long as I'm Big Spoon. I, I well, yeah, actually, you you both could sleep on the on the couch because uh, it, it folds into slept, a bed. We've slept on the same couch before. You've slept that's, with Voltrog, so that's good. I've to slept know. with Voltrog, yeah. Uh, but I've never been to one of these. So <laughs> for for someone like me, Lou. Never been to one of these. I almost, and actually the last two times I planned on going, both to Michigan last year and to Port Fest last year, but both times I had issues come up. And really the reason I had issues come up is because I didn't, I, I mean, this time I let people know like like almost a year, like six months ago, eight months ago, I let people know this period of time is a no-go zone. But I didn't do that last time. So what would you, what, what would somebody like me expect this ex what's this experience like for someone who's never had it before All right so this is your first liberty event i mean true liberty event I, where i have I mean... a bunch of anarchists around me yes okay all right what you could expect is magic uh you are seriously going to be mesmerized by this whole thing oh by the way paul sin says that eventually all webcasts evolved to spooning <laughs> that's true yeah. that's actually yeah. that is a scientific uh, fact that Objective. That's physics. Better than forking. That's Better actually physics. Forking. I'm, I'm going to go back to my very first meetup and uh, with, with the MPLC and then also lead into the fest, which was, as I mentioned before, a few months later. My very first meetup, or I'm pretty sure it was my first meetup, was at uh, uh, Katie's house. And there were just a handful of people there, maybe – 10 to 15, something like that. And and this is my first time meeting any of them ever before. So I walked in, introduced myself, people introduced themselves. And I got to meet people that I communicate with on a regular basis. Uh, I see them when I'm down in Detroit. They stop up here and see me a couple times a year. Uh, one of the guys I wound up going to Pork Fest with a couple years ago. And it's just really close friends. Um, but the meat and potatoes of that meetup was – uh, a guy, Anarchist, was doing a presentation on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was still new-ish at the time. Uh, it, it really had, hadn't uh, received the acceptance that it has today. So I, it, even though right now it's still in its infancy, phage, infancy stages, uh, it, was very, I mean, it was really brand new. And not even a lot of libertarians or anarchists had heard about it yet. It was, I mean, like I said, it was like 2013 or something like that. But anyway, which in dog uh, years or, is seventy three years ago, or, or you know what, it may have been twenty twelve, eighty seven years ago. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was no, no, twenty twelve wasn't seven years ago. A eighty seven yeah. in dog years, eighty seven. Oh, years okay. Ago. All wow. right. Well, it's anyway, new math. Bottom line is, it was a while back. So, uh, so here I am learning about Bitcoin. I'd heard of it. I didn't really know much about it, and, and got a chance to ask some questions and and. You know, meet the people that were there. It was really great. And I was really on, I was really walking on air because I had finally met these people in real life that I had seen on the internet. It's, you know, I, I, I don't really know how to describe it other than realizing, hey, I'm not the only wackadoodle out there. There's other wackadoodles just like me. There's other people there this weird. And when I went to the fest, I, that was my first real liberty event, major event. And I doubt if a hundred people in total came out, but and e even though I knew probably half of the people already from meetups and barbecues and just hanging out and stuff like that, uh, I was walking on there. I was elated. I had an excitement that I, I couldn't even imagine. And, you know, I could, I can't even describe it. And, a lot of times at, at when you're on a on a weekend getaway or something like that, a camping trip, whatever, you know, as time goes on, you start thinking, all right, I'm ready to go home. 
I wasn't ready to go home. I didn't want to go home. I've heard I was this. Ready to, I heard this I was ready to stay people. out there. Yeah, I was ready to stay out there. It was really nice is because you were around people like you that share your values that think the same way that you do, or at least they're not nasty about the disagreements. They're not judgmental. You know, I we joke a lot about how to cook bacon, but oh the, yeah, the, I really don't the care common how people. The, 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 yeah, the common bacon, bond between yeah. us is that we like bacon. Yeah, so, there you go. Yeah. So the fact that you're a Nazi that puts it in the oven is really not that and relevant. And the fact that you're a Soviet uh, who killed more people than the Nazis also not a problem. Don't right? hate my achievements, but anyway, <laughs> I don't hate you. Totally, you win. You win. Yeah, of, of course I, I do. I, I might stage a protest and speak out for bacon rights. Okay, go ahead. That'd be nice. But anyway, yeah. we don't care. No, <laughs> I'll still eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop go eat killing that. pigs! Go, is that bacon? Go eat that round bacon <laughs> that the Canadians call bacon. I, I can't even do that. Get drunkard. But I literally, all the way up to the last minute, it's like, no, no, don't let this end. Don't, you know. And each each fest has been like that. And there's just an excitement and an energy that you that you draw from being around these people that are like you or similar to you. And... When when you see the way that uh, we see the way that they conduct themselves, uh, particularly with the with the peaceful parenting and nonviolent communication and stuff like that, uh, it's not like going to the campground where you got people yelling at their kids like a bunch of idiots and the kids are running around like little heathens gnawing on the furniture and stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the 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 kids are good and and yeah, they make noise and they get into stuff, but that's what kids do. Kids are and, all right. Yeah, kiss I, so, man, kiss I. As long as my daughter has a place where she can create her slimes, she's probably happy. She will probably be happy there. Then, okay. uh, I, I, I think that I think the best description that I can give to it, and this goes, this comes from a, a friend of mine, Christopher, that I met him at the first one. He was uh, the banjo playing hippie, and uh, he referred to it as a group therapy weekend. Okay. And what's what's really nice is the event is small enough and intimate enough that you can go around and probably have a chance to, well, definitely have a chance to meet everybody, but probably have a chance to go around and have a conversation with everybody or darn near everybody. And if you're at a larger event like Porkfest used to be, that's impossible. Yeah, you you just can't because there used to be a lot of people going to that. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comment here about what you just said, and then I, actually I'm gonna segue into what may what may well be our last question of the show. Uh, I I can't even imagine. I guess I'll find out uh, June 22nd, or uh, actually I'll be there the 23rd. But I can't imagine what it will be like to be surrounded by people, um, interacting with them in a useful daily kind of way. And not be seriously triggered every five seconds. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be amazing. Because, you know, it's like, you know, you're just having a normal conversation. And, you know, somebody's, you know, aren't the police wonderful? Or something like that comes up over and you're like, oh. Yeah, you're not going to hear that. Yeah. That's what wow. you're not going to hear. I mean, come on. I can't even imagine. I mean, I've, again, I've experienced it one-on-one -on -one with a couple people. But... A group where you can actually like almost you're almost well in a, in a you're you're in a spontaneous community that that rises and then goes away. So mm -hmm. well, not you know it goes away in the physical sense of that location. So let me get to the elephant in the room. You change the date. You change the date from what? August, where it used to be, to June twenty second. Which to the twenty six, which what twenty second to the twenty six, which I I I'm, did, I don't, did did Porkfest move its date or, but originally it was almost like it was set like right at the same time of Porkfest. How did that happen? The place that we uh, Circle Pines was not available in August. I think there was a wedding wow. going on. Oh man, that really ruins my Aww. whole drama. Man, I had a whole thing that it was. Oh, that, dude. Wow, I was gonna be like the e, uh, e, e online. I was gonna be like the e online of anarchy, 
TMZ. And, yeah, yeah, TMZ. I was going to be the TMZ of anarchy exclusive here on on TMZ on TMZ anarchy. Why? Why? I don't. Midwest I don't really know. changed. I don't know that anybody said, "Hey, let's change it from August to June so we can compete with Pork Fest." Because bleep them. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was about scheduling conflict, but I don't think anybody really shied away from competing with Pork Fest. So it was like uh, it's not a big deal. So it's kind of like Fest, oh, go ahead, sorry. Pork Fest is whatever. I I never really got along with the Free Staters. But. Seems oxymoronic. I don't got anything against Pork Fest, but uh, you know, oh free, no, that's free it's just a personal thing. Growing state. up in New Hampshire. Growing up in New Hampshire and 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 having everyone tell me about how much of a holy land New Hampshire is, and me going like, live, live free or die. <laughs> yeah, live free funny. or die. Yeah, live yep. free or die. Why are you still breathing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the place the place where the Democratic uh, representative or something like that says, we need to make some anti freedom laws to get those libertarians to stop moving here. <laughs> right. Exactly. So. so. Yeah. So this is it's been great having you on here, Lou. Yeah, we'll have to have you come back on another time on another show. Um if you'd like to. Unless... Where we can kind of we can beef and, and, and yeah. Have, yeah. Have more of an we, exchange. Yeah. But this is very informative. No, I'm, no, I'm, I I'm 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 very I'm anxious excited. for as as a many especially the people that I know on Facebook and uh you know, I, I actually like the people a lot of people on Facebook that I love to meet in person. So, and you guys know who you are, the people that I regularly interact with. I'd love to see you guys uh, at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Do, we, do you have any last, uh, last remarks for our studio audience here, Lou? And your, your, your call signs and your uh, where they find you and all that. Do your promotion, okay. man. I, I guess I guess the simplest promotion that I can give is um, if you've never been to an event like this, it's something that you that you probably really want to strongly consider. The reason being is you can theorize about what it would be like to live in a voluntary society. This is your chance to see it in real life. This is the this is the model. This is the showroom model. This is the try it before you buy it. The the see if it really works out. And I think you're going to find that it, it that it does work out quite well. And you are going to enjoy it. It'll make it a lot easier to actually discuss liberty with other people. You can not just exchange ideas and, and thoughts with people, but you can build some serious bonds. And and I mean, there's people that that I go to visit. They come to visit me. Like I said, you can you can create some really good friendships and some really good bonds there. It's 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 like a family of sorts and fam. And it's the it's it's the Anfam. Yep, and the Anfam. You can go to is it mplfest.org? Yes, mplfest.org. mplfest.org. And listen, man, I'm not I'm not just a customer. I'm also a customer because uh, <laughs> I I have registered. I've registered for the junior cabin, uh, and I'm getting a tent. So getting a tent set up, which I don't know what we're gonna do with the tent. But uh, we're gonna do stuff with the tent. Figure it, it out. It, the tent looks like a little house, and you can open it up in the front in the daytime. It's gonna be if cool. I if I bring my controller and we get set up with a speaker. I oh can yeah, DJ. we gotta do stuff. And plus, you, you can plug in, right? You can plug in there. Yeah. I I have speaker. a I have a portable speaker that you may be able to use, and I usually bring it with me anyway. Ooh, we could have some beats going. Oh yeah, get we can drop people. the fat beats with uh, <laughs> DJ Bodes. <laughs> DJ Bodes is in the house. I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible DJ, but DJ I DJ Bodes. Well, you know what? All DJs are terrible, so you're, you know, it's, it's all right. It's, it's, it's all right. Fair enough. So you can find, <laughs> you can also find Lufine on. Now that's pretty much about it. Uh, come on out, enjoy it, have a good time, get some good food, meet some good people, have some great discussions. Uh, there will probably be some good presentations. As I mentioned, Jeffrey Tucker and Dana Martin will be there. Uh, there will be a handful of freedom fiends. So if you want to meet the the punk juvenile delinquent. The, oh, the, oh, my, I do want to meet the him. The Yak Codger. He's the there. great Yak Emperor. The great yeah, Yak Emperor. Oh, Lou, Lou is... now, he, he used to be known as Yak Boy, but now he's the Yak Codger because he did not do a show recently because he says, oh, I'm, I'm feeling old. I, I, I need to get to bed and you know when the sun goes down because I get up when the sun comes up and blah, blah, blah I'm, a, I'm too old for this shit. And I'm like, dude, the three people doing the show are almost three times your age. So yeah. if, if you're feeling old, you'd be doing the show. <laughs> he, 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 he is the Yak Emperor. Or Lou gets a little chafed because Lou is is basically he's the Yak Emperor's uh, chef, 
And uh, sometimes Lou gets a little a little insecure about that, but it's okay, Lou. It's okay. Yes, yeah, right. I'll serve up the yak emperor. <laughs> yeah. So he's. So he's, I, I look he's forward the to seeing it. It's it, it, Nick Nick Hazelton is who he's talking who he's talking about for those who don't know. And yeah. I, I I I I'm really looking forward to meet Nick. Love Nick. He's awesome. Good. Oh, I, he, he's he's a great kid. I tease him. I joke. Uh, you know, I, I say that he's doing manual labor what? because he dropped out of high school. But I, I really <laughs> love him. He runs a yak farm. So, yeah. yeah. I, I've known him That's online since he was 14 because he was a listener. And he'd send messages to the Facebook page back when I was just an admin on there. And I'd explain things to him. And and uh, I, just, just a really swell kid. I, I've watch him grow up i think of him as a son if i had a son he would look just like nick but only if i had a one night stand with a poodle right and i've had a one never mind i don't want to go into that story <laughs> that's, back in college that's another, back in college man back oh in boy college. and and Bodie, how about you you got any last words and call signs and uh, i'm just excited to go and meet people and promote what we are all of our stuff and meet all these people that do way more than me and just, oh, just see what everybody, I don't know. I'm curious how everything's going to go. And, gonna and be, where, where can they find Mr. Boatster? Where they can, where can they find me? Uh, radiogora.net for my YouTube channel would be preferable. I'm trying to get that up. And your shop, Bodora, agora.threadless.com. .com. Yeah, agora.threadless.com. All my t-shirts and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm going to try and get some prints. Um, Get some of my best shirts printed and try and hawk them off at the sh at the event. Yeah, I'll be I'll be wearing some Bodie when I'm there, definitely. And you could find me, Paul Gordon. I actually make it real easy for everyone. I don't have all my links on there, but I will in short order, so I'll just say it anyway. It's real easy to remember. You go to is tv dot me. That's the logo that's above my head right now. So that's the right. Where is it? That's so, the logo. Sorry. There. Oh, sorry. Yep, yep. That's the logo. It's right there is tv.me you find all the shows that i do i do a number of shows with Bodie. i do other shows too and uh, i'll i'll put up my facebook link and other things too you find it all there i know lou goes to is tv.me regularly every like, day what's paul every doing day. now i must know what is paul doing now so thank you everybody for watching us and all for all of the how many comments did we get like uh, 10 I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Six, ten. I six, don't know. Six, ten. Wow. Which I exaggerated. Is, but it's interesting. We have three hundred seven. 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 We have three hundred and seven live listeners so far. I don't know how many listeners we'll end up with, but uh, uh, usually three hundred and seven. The old, now. the old things. I might have to refresh. Yeah, we're at three oh seven. That's that's the uh, total that's views. I'm... We gotta see what. Well, yeah. yeah, we got 307 total views. So everybody who watched this awesome, uh, be sure you share this uh, with all of your friends and neighbors. Uh, let's get as, as many folks who, who, who can go, as many folks there as possible, because I would love – there's something – there's like some of the people that I've met in real life, It's uh, it changes your relationship. It's like once you meet them in the reels. It's a different dynamic all of a sudden. And you're usually a little yeah. tiny bit nicer to each other. Tiny bit? Yeah. It, it's, yet. it's a faith-affirming event. Yes. It's a, it's a faith-affirming event. And the faith is in humanity and liberty. I'll say that. All right. Fair enough. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll see you the next time we do Viz Previs, which actually we do have a few shows planned next. Well, at least one show planned next week. Um, we got some interesting stuff. We're going to be talking about automating Congress. Stay tuned. We'll give you more information. Uh, if you stay tuned to the Liberty Principle page, uh, I, I cover the one to four slot. And during that slot, <laughs> I'll put some stuff out and uh, give you ideas of what we're doing. All right. Thank you, everybody. Well, see you next time. Worms. Worms. <laughs>